Good evening, everyone. Uh, wait for a second to make sure everyone gets connected to audio. Well, it's 6 p.m., so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight uh, for the City of Buda Virtual Town Hall meeting to talk about our solid waste and recycling programs. A couple of quick introductions. My name is Micah Grau. I'm the Deputy City Manager here for the City of Buda, and I uh, oversee our solid waste program. And with me tonight, I have uh, Greg Beal, who's the Sustainable and Diversion Coordinator for Texas Disposal Systems. Good evening. And we really do intend this, this um, virtual town hall meeting to be a little bit more uh, conversational. Um, so feel free to keep yourself on mute or off video, whatever you're comfortable doing. Wanted to let you all know that we are recording this uh, session. We intend to put it on our website afterwards so that the information that's shared can be shared with other people in the community if they weren't able to attend this event. Um, but what we're going to cover tonight is we're going to talk about the solid waste options that are available here in the city of Buda for city of Buda uh, residents. Uh, we won't be focused as much on commercial services, but again, we'll be focused more on residential services. And a note too, if you live outside of the city of Buda, if you don't get a uh, trash or solid waste bill from the city of Buda, then uh, these services don't apply to you. So if you live in Sunfield, Leisure Wood, or some of the other subdivisions that are just outside of the city limits, you don't get those, you don't get the services through the city of Buda. And so these services may not apply to you. Um, but we're gonna start with, with, again, talking about the different options that are here. Uh, for uh, citizens or residents in Buda, uh, Texas Disposal Systems will give an overview of the services that they have and um, who they are as a company. And then we'll have live Q&A. Uh, some of you have sent in some questions already, um, but certainly during the live Q&A section, if you saw something in the presentation or you want to ask more information, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask it, or you can even put it in the chat feature and one of us will read it out loud. Uh, but with that, let's get started. You ready, Greg? I am, thank you. <laughs> All right. So Texas Disposal Systems has been servicing the city of Buda for our solid waste needs for, for several years. Um, I can't remember exactly how long the contract has been in place, but it, it's been um, over a decade, I believe. But this last year in 2021, we renegotiated and entered, entered into a new five-year contract with Texas Disposal Systems. For a home, uh, a residential site in Buda, residential home in Buda, uh, it includes some basic services, which include weekly trash pickup with a 95 gallon cart, bi-weekly recycling, uh, bi-weekly uh, green waste, and quarterly uh, on-demand uh, bulk waste pickup, which I'll get to. Uh, there were some changes with our, our services, and that's really what we're here to talk about tonight, but um, uh, some of the big changes were we expanded the recycling program. So in addition to green, brown, and clear glass and plastics one through seven, we've introduced a new bag to bag program. This is a, a plastic bag recycling program, which I'll let Greg talk about more in a little bit. Um, you can continue to recycle aluminum, tin, and steel cans, paper products such as newsprint, junk mail, magazines, et cetera. Also new are gable top and aseptic containers. So like your milk cartons, as long as those are rinsed out and washed. A uh, large rigid plastic, so if it doesn't have a, a number one through seven on it, but it's it's sometimes you get packing material that has large pieces of plastic in it, those can now be recycled in the program, along with household scrap metal. Uh, still don't include metal hangers, those gunk up the machines, um, but large other pieces of metal can be recycled through this, the, the curbside program. And then we also added holiday light recycling. While this doesn't happen through the 95 gallon uh, curbside cart, you can bring your lights to us here at City Hall right now um, until uh, late January. We have some bins located over by the library drop off here at City Hall and you can get your, um, you can recycle old holiday lights if they uh, need to get rid of them. I mentioned the green waste program. This is a bi-weekly program and no, we don't have a cart like some other communities do. Uh, one of the ways to keep the costs down was to, to really make it an optional program it's included in your cost, you don't have to pay more for it, um, but you, don't, you also don't have another cart. So instead, uh, you can take 10, 10 paper lawn bags um, and put them, fill them with leaves or, or um, whatever you have that, that's, that's green waste that needs to be disposed of. 
and uh, on your green waste state, those will be picked up by PDS and taken to their site and processed into compost or mulch. And I also mentioned that we have quarterly on-demand bulk waste pickup. And this is a service that many of our residents uh, forget to remember or don't know that we have, but uh, each quarter of the calendar, you can call and schedule TDS to come to your home and pick up bulk items up to three cubic yards. So if you have like, I'll give you an example. I had a, a rug at my house that it wouldn't fit in our, in our uh, dump, in our roll off, obviously. So we were able to cut that up and schedule that for a quarterly pickup. Um, if you have uh, other things like that, old furniture, uh, those can all be scheduled uh, to be picked up through the quarterly waste bulk pickup. You won't schedule that through the city of Utah. You'll call Texas Disposal directly and schedule it with them. Um, they, they will take mattresses if you are trying to get rid of those, but those are accepted for a fee. And then uh, if you have appliances like refrigerators and freezers, you have to have those uh, a certificate showing that the Freon has been removed from those before. Uh, TDS can take those items. Just because we're, we're at the, the time of the year, uh, we just closed past this window, but uh, also to note during the holidays as residents can place two additional 30 gallon bags by their cart during the, the holiday season. So from December 26th through January 7th, um, we know people get together and they may have more trash waste from presents and, and guests and meals. So just take that in mind, make sure you, you put those out and you wait until the, your trash day to pick them up just so no uh, neighborhood critters or anything break into it overnight. And then a, another new thing is residents, in addition to the, the free quarterly waste pickup, residents can take five cubic yards of material to the landfill each month themselves. Um, what they'll need to do is take a copy of their utility bill, take it to the gates, and they'll let you dump that material uh, yourself for free at no cost. Um, a, a word of a caution, though, is make sure that you have your load secured, put a tarp over it. Uh, uh, that helps make sure that nothing's blowing out of the back of the vehicle and helps make sure the roadways are kept clean. Uh, we also get asked uh, often about household hazardous waste. And while we don't offer a household hazardous waste disposal through this collection with Texas Disposal Systems, uh, any resident in Hayes County is able to take household hazardous waste materials such as uh, paint, um, cooking oil, vehicle oil, household cleaners, any of those things to uh, the city of San Marcos. They have a collection point in San Marcos. It's open a few days a week. You can take those at no cost. We're also looking to host a household hazardous waste collection event. Uh, we've done those periodically in the past. I think the last one was in 2018. Uh, we're trying to line one up here for late 2022. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but if you have questions about some of the things that I mentioned or want to learn more about any of our uh, solid waste programs, I encourage you to visit the city's uh, sustainability website. The link to it is on the screen, but it's ci.buta.tx.us slash sustainable buta. On there, we have information about the recycling program. You can see more information about how to request a additional trash or recycling cart because you can get additional ones of those if you need them for your household. And then information like on the household hazardous waste collection as well. And uh, with that, uh, Greg, I'll hand it over to you to talk about what uh, you do at, over at TDS. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Uh, just a quick note, if you want to know what a, a cubic yard is, we, 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 we reference a washing machine is about one cubic yard. So modern washing machines are about one cubic yard. People ask that frequently. All right. Hopefully everybody can see this. Looking good, Mike, on your end? Yes, okay, looks great. Fantastic. Cool, cool. So I'm just going to give an overview of what we do here at Texas Disposal Systems, why it's important to recycle in general, and just an overview of everything, uh, services that we provide to the city of Buda. So we'll do recycling 101, as I call it. So uh, looking at these photos, this is a great photo series put together by a gentleman named Greg Siegels. He uh, asked folks to save about seven days of their trash and bring it to his backyard, and he took some photos. So it turns out... Um, the average American throws out about four and a half pounds of waste every day. But when we throw it out, where does it go? We say throw it away, but it doesn't go away, right? It's going to go to the landfill. And if you look at these photos, we have a lot of material in our worlds, but a closer look shows that most of it is recyclable or can be recovered in some way. So we want to make sure we do that. And uh, we do that here at Texas Disposal Systems, where we have uh, one of the state's first fully integrated 
landfill systems, which means we'll take your green waste, put it with the compost and use that materials recovery facility. That's where all the recycling goes and your landfill. And this is all on site right there off FM 1327 in Creedmoor. So not far from Muta, which makes it very efficient uh, environmentally wise as far as the trucks on the road. So why is it, why is it important to recycle, right? Michael, you probably know for the environment why it's important, but there are a few other reasons as well, right? We want to make sure that waste doesn't have to travel further, right? If we just put everything in the landfill, it's going to get filled up faster, and then we're going to have to open a new one. We don't want to do that. Cost will increase with that, of course. If now the landfill is not 10 miles away, but 40, 50 miles away, that's going to increase costs. At the same time, creating more emissions because the truck's going to have to drive all those extra miles to transport the trash just to throw it in a hole in the ground. And everything we throw out and uh, can recycle and put in a recycling cart is a recoverable resource, right? It's going to get reused and turned into something new, which is fantastic. And morally, you know, on your own, I think it's the right thing to do. I think our owners think it's the right thing to do to make sure that we conserve our natural environment. It's uh, very important. So again, everything we use every day comes from somewhere on the planet, a natural resource, right? Paper is going to come from trees. Soda cans actually come, uh, aluminum comes from the ground. Bauxite is mined for that. And Water bottles, plastic come from petroleum. Um, in order to get these raw materials, we have to chop, dig, and drill, and also process. It's a lot of energy utilized to get all these raw materials when we have recoverable materials that we can reuse again, such as aluminum, which is one of my favorite recyclables since it can be uh, recycled almost indefinitely, right? From the time you put it into your cart that we collect it, put it up uh, into the commodity markets about six to eight weeks from your cart to getting turned into a new soda can or anything else. And what happens when we don't recycle these items? Well, for instance, aluminum cans will stay in the ground for about 500 years because in a landfill, it gets covered with dirt. Nothing's gonna break it down. It's just gonna sit there. Water bottles about 450 years and glass about a million years before it breaks down because sunlight's not hitting it. The elements aren't hitting it. So that stuff will just stay there forever when we could reuse it for uh, another purpose. Here's a nice video. I like to give a virtual tour of the MRF, which is the recovery facility where all the recycling goes. We do single stream recycling, of course. You know, people from other places in the country might have to separate out their recycling. Luckily, we get to throw it all in one cart. Right here, you see the truck picking everything up off the tipping floor. We use a number of uh, technological devices here. We have conveyor belts using gravity. We have humans as well going through and picking things out. That's why we may make sure all that hazardous material stays out for those folks to keep safe. And again, we're using gravity and conveyor belts to take these aluminum cans, push them up into um, the feeder and push into a bale. So this bale is gonna weigh about 2000 pounds and holds about, Mike, you want to guess how many cans are in there? Have you taken the tour? <laughs> We've got 22,000 cans can fit in one of those bales that weighs 1,000 pounds. So pretty cool. We keep those at our facility. Uh, some folks might ask, well, do you recycle at your facility? No, we collect and process it so it can be sent to a third party. Uh, Anheuser-Busch or Coca-Cola will, will buy this aluminum and turn it into new cans. One of the other um, streams that we call it that we do is your green waste and also compost from area schools, uh, Hayes, Hayes CISD, the schools do do composting in their cafeteria. So we take that green waste that we get from you all, the limbs, the leaves, mix it with that food waste and turn it into a new resource. We turn it into viable soil and compost and or mulch. As you can see here, this is what's called a windrow. This is how you would have the brown materials and the green materials, as we call it, break down and turn into uh, nutrient rich soil. So if you see here, you see all that kind of look like smoke that was actually steam because as the process of composting happens, things are cooking. We take trees, untreated um, lumber, we could put that in our compost heap. It's going to go through a pretty, pretty significantly strong shredder that's going to take all that material and break it down. And uh, they get the perfect mix of that plus the green waste, um, the green waste being more of the nitrogen rich and mix it up and we're going to get some great fantastic dirt out of that, right? It's a useful resource. Otherwise, that would have um, gone in the ground. And we, uh, um, some folks do know, but as food decomposes in the landfill, it creates methane, which is uh, one of the more potent greenhouse gases. So if we could keep that out, turn it into something new, I think that benefits the entire community. OK, we'll do an overview of recycling and trash. And as I like to say, because I like rhymes, I like to know before you throw. So let's do a brief overview. I know we're talking about new services, but let's talk about what you all already can accept. So paper products, right? Single stream again, we have clean paper. It's got to be clean, dry, right? Not food soiled. So we could take newspaper, notebook, magazines, file folders, 
and office paper. And you just make sure that that goes right into your can, right? Notice that everything's going in loose because we don't want to bag our recyclables. We do want to have those loose in the carts. Um, I'll tell you about plastic bags later, the ones that we can collect. Also cardboard and box board. Oops, go back there. Amazon, everything's big these days. So we wanna make sure we get our cardboard and our food boxes all recycled. You can put those in. A big tip I have for you all is to break down those boxes for your own sake. You're paying for the cart, you're paying for the volume in the cart. So if you put a box in that's full, it's gonna take up a lot of space. So I would recommend and encourage you to flatten your boxes, uh, push them down on the side or create more space in your cart for your other recyclables. Personally, I know mine after that two weeks is, is almost to the point of overflowing. So that's gonna save you a significant amount of space. Even the smaller food boxes, it adds up after a while in that volume in the cart. What else do we accept? We accept empty containers, such as hard plastics, uh, water bottles, yogurt cups, make sure they're clean, food containers, uh, spray and detergent, as long as they're rinsed out pretty well, we will take them. Metal, that's aluminum and food tins that we might have uh, cat food or tomato sauce in. Glass jars, we'll take all that. We'll take that to our facility. Think green, empty and clean. Another one of my rhymes, I just keep coming up with those. Uh, you wanna make sure that it's empty and clean as best as possible. You don't wanna go crazy putting it in the dishwasher or really get into it, but make sure it's most of the food residue is all out of there and we'll be happy as can be. Reason for that obviously is we don't wanna get that paper wet and uh, ruin that, we won't be able to recycle it. Uh, some of the new empty containers that we take, uh, Micah mentioned before, the aseptic and gable top, not much need to know about that. I could go on and on about the material makeup of it, but the aseptic you usually find on the shelves in the grocery store and the gable tops are usually refrigerated. That's the way I, I uh, figure the difference between those two. And again, keep them empty, keep them clean. We can put them in the recycle and we make sure that these get reused in some way. Fantastic program that the city of Buda is the second uh, customer of TDS to participate in is the yellow bag the bag program. So with the yellow bag the bag program, we could take all these kind of harder to recycle soft plastics as we call them, put them in a, um, a, a plastic uh, bag that you're going to collect at City Hall. You can pick those up. I know Micah has some events during the year. The Sustainability Commission will give out these bags to Buda residents only, and you can put all of the single use plastics, dry cleaning bags, newspaper bags, bread bags, Ziploc type bags, six pack rings, everything you see here, all that soft plastic that you really can't recycle in your cart goes in that bag. Make sure it's tied up. Doesn't have to go on top or anything, just goes in with everything else. And our workers, as you saw, will be able to pull that off the line and make sure it gets put in the right place. You have to use that, uh, the specific yellow bag to bag. I know the dollar store, some other places have yellow bags. Our folks aren't gonna see that as part of this program. So make sure you use that bag and we'll make sure and uh, tie up the top and we'll make sure that it gets processed in the proper way. The reason we put it in the bag is because as you saw at the MRF, everything's going through the conveyor belts pretty fast. So all this loose plastic would just fly up in the air and create a sort of a hazard. So we found a great system. You're the second one only to do it. So I'm looking for some success in that. And it's a great way to really just divert more materials from the landfill. A lot of things we see in recycling, big no-nos are going to be your pizza boxes, styrofoam. Y'all can do plastic bags now, uh, chip bags and straws. None of that stuff is recyclable. Another one I want to point out is um, lithium batteries and just batteries in general. Please do not put those in the recycling. Those can cause fires. They do across the country. It's, it's one of the most uh, hazardous points to working in that facility is fires caused by lithium batteries. Once you get all that other stuff, you know, thrown into the, the green waste and the recycling. You're not gonna have much to throw out, you know, some food waste here and there, but then you just have styrofoam, compact discs, DVDs, wire hangers, and garden hoses and textiles are just things we cannot accept in recycling. So just make sure you throw those in the trash. Just give a brief overview of the green waste that uh, Micah had mentioned before. This is every other week, you get 10 bags, every other week. Those are the 30 gallon bags you see, Home Depot, True Value, wherever you go, uh, pick those up. Some folks might ask why you have to put it in the paper bags. It's because that's going to the facility where it's gonna be composted, can't compost plastic. So make sure you put them in these, uh, they call them craft paper bags, and then we'll make sure that it gets processed correctly. Uh, we also have you know, the, the brush collection here. You wanna make sure that it's no more than four foot in length, tied up as best as possible. Same with the trunks, make sure they're less than four inches in diameter. Set those out nice and neat by the curb and we'll make sure we pick them up. Uh, I think the next dates are the 17th and then the 31st for those pickups. 
Um, I found that out through our TDS Waste Wizard, which is a great resource to use. If you have a, a smartphone or a computer, you could get the app or you could just go online and you get your collection calendar. So I just put in a random address in the city of Buda and found where the green waste is gonna pick up, which day is recycling day. Great part is you can get a recycling reminder. I know sometimes, <laughs> I never remember until I'm looking at my neighbors. Did they put theirs out? Did they put it out? You'll get a notification. Hey, recycling's tomorrow. Make sure you get it out. So you never forget again. So you could do that. We have a what goes where feature where you could search items. Here I typed in soda can. Oh, it goes in recycling. I knew that. But it's great to go in there and make sure you can figure out where everything goes. A fun little game uh, for adults and kids alike to play. So visit that, download it, try it out, see how you like it. And that's pretty much it. I'll uh, take some questions from anybody there, but I appreciate your time. And here we go. I'll stop my share. <laughs> Great information, Greg. Let me share my screen again. Sure. Uh, again, we, we have some questions that came in from people already. Um, I'm going to start off with some of my own. Uh, with the bag the bag program, I know a lot of people get these at their house, sometimes every day, sometimes not every day. But can these... Um, materials like this packaging material from Amazon and other shippers can this go in the bag to bag program? Yes, sir, it can as long as it's all plastic. I know sometimes they have ones that are plastic and paper. So those we won't be able to take but that blue one. Yes, those blue mailers will definitely take those those can go in that plastic bag, the bag to bag program we will take those. Another question I have um, get a lot of junk mail to the house and sometimes it has you know this little uh, plastic window on that. Is sure. that okay to put in their cycle cart just as is or do we rip that out? A hundred percent. I spent a good deal of my life ripping those off and come to find out when I visited a um, recycling plant where they do paper that that gets sieved out, you know, they mulch it up and, and put it in a big vat. And uh, so you don't have to do it. Save some time on that. <laughs> Great. Um, I, I bought some new pens today, too, and uh, have a little pen container. You know, it has a little plastic cover on it. And the plastic itself doesn't say it's recyclable. But I know cardboard's recyclable. What about something like this? Something like that kind of small plastic. If it's uh, if you have all the um, paper off of it, you could probably. I'm gonna try to see. Oh, it's like a pen thing like that. Yeah. Stuff like that. We're not gonna be able to recycle because it's too small and it'll get lost in that processing. So I could take I would cardboard just, off and do that. Correct. Cardboard off okay. and then take the other one. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, I know aluminum foil can be a problem. Is there any options for people to recycle clean aluminum foil that doesn't have food on it? Can they? ball it up in a big ball or stuff it in a can or something? Is that an option? That's absolutely correct. You can actually just throw it in, just ball it up and throw it in the, the heart loose and the density of it will help weigh it down. Don't don't let it flatten out. And like you said, make sure it's clean. I know usually aluminum foil has food in it, uh, enchiladas, lasagna, all that good stuff. So if there's too much food in it, got to throw it out. Yep. Okay, good. Um, some of the questions we got... Um, People ask if they could put a liner in their recycling cart, uh, you know, that you can buy the really large trash mm -hmm. bags, I guess they want to keep their cart a little cleaner. Is that, is that allowed? Is that a problem for y'all? I would not recommend that at all because when the truck does come to pick it up, that bag's likely going to come out of your cart and wind up contam not contaminating. It will get pulled out, but it's not going to do any good for you. And holding it in the cart, you're going to need a pretty big bag for 90, 95 gallons. So we prefer to have it loose. That's why we recommend washing as best as possible the recyclables, you know, keep them dry. And then when, when uh, we come around, it, it doesn't get so bad. You know, I've, I've, I've lived here for three years and even in the heat, as long as that recycling's uh, clean, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, somebody asked about weekly recycling and, and uh, if I could, Greg, I'll, I'll take a stab at this one. So we looked at that quite a bit when we were renegotiating the contract. And uh, while there was demand for uh, a weekly recycling, um, you know, it, it would have put a, a truck on our streets again every week instead of every other week. Um, and talking to Dex Texas Disposal Systems, they didn't believe that the volume was there, and we didn't have we didn't think that we'd have enough households that would participate uh, every week to make it worthwhile. And so we looked at the costs, and in order to add that service weekly, it would have made the bills go up, uh, you know, a, a modest amount. Um, but instead of that, we negotiated where residents can request a second cart. So. There is a cost for that, but it, it's pretty nominal. I think it's three dollars and eighty-six cents. But if you are a household that has a lot of recycling and uh, you want to to recycle as much as you can, call the city of Buda. You can re request a second recycling cart that way. But at this time, we don't offer weekly recycling. Excellent. 
Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, the second for second cart, that's a great rate. I, I, I should maybe look into getting a second one myself when it gets overflow. But yeah, just put it out with the on the same day and you'll get a, another 95 gallons taken. Another question is why can't blue glass be recycled? Sure, blue glass, which uh, I believe contains cobalt, is very similar to almost like a window pane. When you, when you think of recycling, it's mostly things, especially in glass, that might have contained food at one point. So you want to have food grade glass, right? Because that's easy to recycle. Bottles with beverages, of course, also considered food grade glass. But that other type of glass, because of some of the chemicals in it, make it very difficult to recycle. So unfortunately, you have to throw it in the trash. Okay. Uh, how, do, oh, all right, let me rephrase this. Do uh, people need to remove labels from cans, uh, bottles, et cetera, when recycling them? Absolutely not. Um, even though it is a different material, so say a Poland spring bottle or something like that might have the label on it, the commodities folks that buy those big bailed bulk um, material know that there will be a minimal amount of what we call contamination in it, right? So they'll allow for one to 5% contamination because they know most folks that throw out their bottles are not going to take off the labels. It's great if you do it. It's not going to affect the recyclability of that bottle. So just go ahead and leave that on. It's kind of like the same thing with the uh, the window on the uh, on the envelope. It's it's we expect it. We know it's going to happen. Um, okay. Somebody was asking also, I think about a uh, bottle caps earlier in that chat. Uh, they were asking, should you leave the bottle caps on? Yes, you should. What we we recommend and industry standard is to crush the uh, plastic bottle and put the top on. It's gonna serve two purposes doing that. You're gonna reduce the space that that bottle takes up, but also any liquid that might be in there is not gonna get on your paper products. So. Good, good tips. Yep. Uh, uh, this next question is about compost, uh, compostable waste through the green waste system. Um, you know, people know that they can put branches and limbs and, and leaves in it. Can they also put, you know, we all have vegetables and, and fruit and, we chop up things as we're cooking it. Can all that go in the green waste program as well? Unfortunately not. We would not recommend putting that stuff in there at all because it's going to putrefy and cause a big stink. The one thing I can say is if you do want to take the top of your pizza box, rip it in half, you could throw that in the uh, the brown bag because that's just, as long as there's a minimal, minimal amount of cheese, you know, it's up to you what, what kind of critters you want coming through uh, your yard before we do pickup day, you know, if a raccoon or anything smells something out there, they're gonna they're gonna tear it up. That's why we wouldn't recommend putting that uh, in your green waste bags. Okay. Somebody also asked about how they can dispose of medicine. And again, I'll, I'll answer this one. We do have a city uh, prescription drug, drug drop-off container at our public safety building. So if you go by the city of Buda Police Department, it's located here at 405 uh, Loop Street, uh, right next to City Hall Library. Uh, they have a drop-off container in the lobby where if you have old or unused prescription or unneeded prescription drugs, you can drop those off there and dispose of them safely. Um, a good question. What do y'all do with the recyclables that are collected? Sure. So what we do, we collect it, bail it up like you saw. So each different material, you're going to have a, a bale of milk jugs, you'll have a bale of laundry detergent, a bale of aluminum cans. Those are actually considered a commodity. There's a commodities market. So luckily we have some space. So it's kind of like playing the stock market. If we want to hold our aluminum and it goes up 10 cents, great. Then we'll sell it and a buyer will come and take it and they'll process it. So we take it, store it for a bit until the price is just right. And then uh, get it out the door. Cardboard, you know, one of the bigger ones, cardboard, aluminum are the ones that are, are constantly going through. Oh, somebody no, asked, I just saw it on the chat. I'm sorry. No, I was uh, going to ask you too. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, they mentioned I, in one slide, I said not the Ziploc bags. What I meant by not putting in the in cart is loose. Don't put the Ziploc bags in loose. That's what we don't want to see in the recycle cart. Okay, another question from the chat is what about shredded paper? Um, you know, you have your sensitive records at home. Can they dispose of those if it's shredded? Cannot put, you can put it in the recycling cart. It's not going to uh, get recycled because that becomes a ticker tape parade at the facility, right? Again, uh, lightweight materials like that are going to go all over the place. That's something you could put in your um, green waste cart, right? It's just shredded paper. It's just like uh, broken branches. So if you want to do that, there's some services that will you know, take your sensitive documents and make sure nobody pastes them back together, I guess, like they do in spy movies. So <laughs> make okay. sure we keep that safe. Somebody also asked about what about disposing of ashes from their fire pits or barbecue pits? What do you think about that? Sure. So you're going to want to make sure that that is completely not 
lit anymore. So a day or two after, you know, the same as when you go camping, you're going to want to make sure the fire's out. You can then uh, scoop that up. It's, it's not going to be recyclable. It's not going to go in the green waste cart. You're going to have to throw that trash. So usually I just scoop it up, put it in a um, plastic bag or something like that and throw it in my trash. Okay. Yeah. Somebody also commented about uh, like spray bottles. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it looked like those could be recycled, but they have components in them, like springs sometimes and straws. Is that still recyclable as is? So technically, you know, that that part of it's not going to get recycled, but when it gets crushed and sent to the commodities adjuster, again, they we call it a minimus amount of contamination. So that little spring and that little straw, even though it's in there, it's going to get separated out down the line when the manufacturer wants to process it. Okay. Great questions. Is TDS looking to expand into offering any other recyclables in the future? I know fabric is something that more, more communities across the country are looking to recycle. Anything like that in store? There's no, there's no talk of that yet. Um, I know sometimes we can partner with other groups that might get that. Uh, Goodwill was doing something with the city of Austin, and that included some of our customers where it would be a specific day, and then they'll just put it out in bulk and collect it. We have no plans right now to do anything with anything other than the bag the bag was really big and we're pushing that now so that's good but there's not much other down down the pipeline that i can see i think we collect a pretty significant amount of household materials at this point so we will let you know though for sure okay um and there was a question too about house of hazardous waste which i talked about at the beginning of the presentation yep. um but people if you don't know if you don't realize uh if you live in hayes county you can take any household hazardous waste to uh, the, the facility at the city of San Marcos. They have an agreement with Hayes County where they'll accept it from any household and they'll take it. So your batteries, oils, light bulbs, uh, those types of things, uh, you can take to that facility. There's another recycling facility in San Marcos called Green, Dry, uh, Green Guy Recycling. Sorry, uh, they offer electronics, recycling, TVs, monitors, batteries, that kind of stuff too. So if you have other things, Ink cartridges, I think, was another thing that was asked about. Uh, that facility takes those, and those that's a, I believe, a for-profit group. But I just often refer people down to them because they're the closest thing that takes some of those items. Very cool. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, again, if you have one, throw it in the chat, or feel free to unmute yourself and ask too, whatever you prefer. But we'll give a second for any additional questions that come in. Cool. So I got to go on the tour of the facility a couple months ago, um, and I thought it might be interesting to talk about the kind of community, um, not residential recycling composting that y'all do, but more uh, like taking the food from the schools and taking the old soda and dealing with that. I thought it'd be interesting to share that. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, most of the school districts that we service, Austin Independent, Hayes, CISD, um, San Marcos, they have composting programs for the students. So the food service staff, if there's leftover food, well, that can't, is not edible and they can't donate, will uh, go into a separate container outside and we're going to compost it into all that rich mulch. We do, uh, like you said, get some soda, we get beer, you know, sometimes if the company makes a batch of beer and it's not good they can't just dump it down the drain so they'll take it to us and we put that into the compost heap and make sure that it gets processed that's something you know we talk about are there any extra recycling we're going to expand into i consider composting kind of like nature's way of recycling and it would be great if there was public support and want to do maybe a pilot one day down the line of composting in the city of buta that'd be great you know we have best practices that we use to make sure you know the stink is down and everything gets processed correctly. But usually if somebody's doing the composting, they're into it and are going to do it correctly. So we're looking uh, to expand that. That would be really great. One of the uh, biggest successes we had, you know, we did it with schools. We do it with some stadiums as well. The new um, Q2 stadium that does the Austin FC soccer team up north. They do composting as well and are able to divert a significant amount of waste from the landfill and make sure that it goes to that processing facility. So... Yeah, that's a great thing. Um, part of the community outreach that we do, I know our marketing department last year helped out with a group that helps schools, uh, um, low-income schools with gardens. So we donated a whole bunch of uh, that material, the mulch and the compost to those schools so they can grow new vegetables and flowers with it, which is really fun. Great. Well, with so we that- have, um, In the chat, 
Uh, Leticia asked, other than providing services to the schools, do you offer training and education to staff and students? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the things that uh, I was brought on board for was to first start in the schools. We go out, we help the custodial staff, the kitchen staff, faculty, we get every piece and then we train the students because sometimes there's a piece in the machine that might not work and everything's not getting set out properly. So we did that since day one. I mean, I say we, TDS was doing it before I was on board. So one of the biggest successes was going out to Austin Independent School District initially when they were rolling out the compost and the recycling. We were able to visit every school, teach them how to do the right thing and make sure that they recycled uh, and composted properly. And I think I'm going to pull out some numbers here. I think they've done like millions and millions of pounds of, it was 14 million pounds of recycle and 14 million pounds of uh, composting over the course of five years. So all that got diverted. They're, they're really great at it. They really excel at doing that. Uh, one of the things we were able to do is actually take away some landfill dumpsters, which is great. We're recycling more, but also it saved them money. So that was great outreach that we did with those folks. Any other questions, uh, Melinda, that you see? Yeah, um, Roxanne asked, could I put shredded paper inside a brown paper bag and close it with a couple of staples? Can I put a shredded paper and then put it in your recycle cart? No, because as it's coming down the line, somebody's just gonna see a bag full of stuff. They're not gonna open it up and they will pull it out or the machine's gonna reject it. Um, if you wanna put that brown paper bag inside the green waste paper bag, Cool. Staples would be fine too in that because that's going to get uh, sorted out. Actually, if you saw earlier, the pallets that go in the compost, those have nails and we have a machine that uh, the magnet pulls those nails out. So if you want to put it in your green waste bag, go ahead and do that. But don't put it in the recycle because it will it won't get processed properly. And then just also going back to the tour we took, do you want to talk at all about um, like the garden bill or the secondhand store the cement i just thought those were all really cool too well thank you yes there's, there's so much to talk about we have such a big campus over there where we do some new things so uh the owners found a way to process some of the broken glass because you got to figure once you put that glass in your car it goes in our truck and then it gets dumped out you're going to get a lot of breakage you lose about 30 to 40 percent of that glass to just breakage so we're trying to figure out what do we do with this Turns out you can use that broken glass in the aggregate of concrete, which we now have a concrete facility on site, which is gonna process that. We make um, a whole bunch of pretty cool materials now. It's called ready rocks. So they're kind of like gigantic concrete blocks that can get stacked on top of each other. They use usually like tr transportation type of uh, situation where they need to do retaining walls, things like that. Concrete is actually recyclable too. As it turns out, I know most residents aren't going to deal with that, but on a commercial level, we do take concrete in, crush it back down and get to recycle that. So that's fantastic. You mentioned the, the, the reuse store that we have. It's kind of fantastic. If you ever want to come down to the facility, there's a kind of like a secondhand store with a bunch of uh, items that might have gotten thrown out that are still good. They have vinyl records over there. It's the best kept secret. If you're a vinyl hunter, you can go out and find some cool records. Um, what I'm talking about what I bought personally, uh, the cool camping stoves, the old Coleman camping stoves, they have like 20 of those there. They're all in good shape. They all work washing machines. Uh, Cause sometimes when people throw out, uh, you know, you buy them in sets, you're gonna buy the washing machine and the dryer, right? If one goes out, you're gonna have a mix match set. So sometimes folks will just bring it and say, this still works and we'll put it out and uh, folks can rebuy it. But a whole bunch of cool stuff there that got recovered from going to the landfill and we can resell it back to the public, which is pretty cool. It's one of my favorite places to visit. Every once in a while, go down there and, and check it out. Uh, what else do we have down at the facility? Did you mention anything else? The, uh, the Greenville. Gre Gardenville, right. Gardenville, right. thank you. Yes, indeed. So Gardenville is where we sell all of our composted material as well as fresh mulches and um, just so many different types. We have kitty cushion, which is for playgrounds. So if you have a playground set in your backyard and you want the kids to have a nice surface to play on, they, they found a way to chop up the mulch that it's rounded so it won't create splinters if the kids are jumping around and playing. So that's pretty cool. So many different levels of compost. We have like an elite lawn brand that's gonna have the, the proper chemical composition that's gonna make your lawn grow greener and greener. Um, what else do we have? The Elite Lawn, the other compost mulch. It's, 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 it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Come check it out. We have specials every once in a while, but that's 
right off uh, 1327 there in Creedmoor and open to the public. And it's a full circle, right? It's all the, the things you threw out in your uh, green waste are gonna get turned back into something useful. So where do you get those green waste bags? The, the, the paper ones? Sure, you can go to Home Depot sells those, uh, Ace Hardware, True Value, any, any, any store, most garden centers are gonna have those brown bags that you can throw your green waste in. Oh, this will be a fun question to talk about. Why all the animals on the trucks? <laughs> excellent question, excellent question. We have on a site to show the harmony with nature, we have a bunch of animals in our ranch. The owners, you know, have a, a big heart for the environment and nature and wanted to have animals have a place to live. Um, some of them stay there permanently. Some are not on loan, but we'll keep them as they're being transferred to maybe a zoo or another place in the country. And, you know, some of these are endangered animals where they can have nice open space to breed and kind of bring up the population. There's so many varieties of animals out there. There's a, a rhino named Rodney that is the sweetest creature you've ever met. It's about five tons of pure muscle, but he'll let you come up and just pet him, which is amazing. Um, and it keeps them out of a wild. Some of them, uh, you know, they're like the rhinos are hunted for the horns. Um, sometimes, you know, game hunting and all that can get pretty, uh, out of hand. So we make sure we that it's like a sanctuary almost for animals to live in, in harmony with nature. So the, the animals on the trucks Rowdy, not out in Creedmoor. <laughs> What's that? The animals that are pictured on the truck are chilling out in Creedmoor. That's aren't correct. You could stock photos or something. Nope. Those are the actual animals that are on a, 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 did you get to see any, did they do that part of the tour when you guys went? Yes. Sometimes they, they skip it if they don't have time. So that's that's one of the fun, the fun things we do there. Hopefully one day in the future, I probably shouldn't say anything, but we can get the public to go out. I know my kids would love to go see that and they haven't been out, able to go out yet. So one day, one day we'll be able to, to share that with everybody, but it's, it's pretty cool. You can see some of the animals if you're driving down uh, the road there. So that's why there's animals on the cars. All right, so last call for questions. If you wanna pop them in the chat, I'll be happy to ask them for you. Oh, and the, the, the rhinoceros, the <laughs> his name is Rowdy, not Rodney. I don't know why I called him Rodney the rhino. Rodney's a good name for a rhino as well. Yeah, maybe they'll get another one. I can keep it up in my backyard. <laughs> uh, Micah, while we're waiting to see if anybody has any last minute questions, do you want to do kind of a quick overview of the Sustainability Commission? Uh, thanks for asking, Melinda. So the city does have a Sustainability Commission that was formed in 2016. Uh, this commission is looking at a variety of different things, but uh, solid waste and reduction is one of their goals. Um, in addition to that, they're looking at, at implementing a, uh, the International Dark Sky Program here in Buda. Um, they're, they're looking at doing, um, or we, we've already attained the designation as a Tree City USA. Uh, we've also recently became a Bee City USA. So there's a lot of different things that this group is working on. But they're trying to be out more in public too. So if you ever see them out at a community event or a city event, stop by and say hi. They have lots of, of good information about ways to live more sustainably and to share information about the different programs that we offer here at the city of Buda. All right, I think that's all the questions from the chat. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for, for attending tonight and thank you for your questions. Those are really great questions. And, and, you know, I've been working here for the city of Buda and doing solid waste um, related work for five years and I still learn something new every time I talk to Greg. So thank you, Greg, for your insight and, and uh, for helping to uh, make Buda and the world a, a little bit greener place. Um, we're gonna, again, uh, post this video online. So if your neighbor wasn't able to attend and they want more information about our solid waste and recycling programs, they can do that. But hop on over to ci.buda.tx.us slash sustainable Buda. Um, or you can get to it uh, off the main screen by visiting the utility billing department. Um, but you can see a full list of all the items that are recyclable, what you can't recycle, and then some other sustainable tips as well. Uh, last thing I wanted to do is plug our trash off that we do. This is one of those programs that the Sustainability Commission has taken the lead on. But we're planning to do this on April 9th at City Park uh, here in downtown Buda. Texas Disposal Systems is registered for a sponsor for that. Um, but 
come out, help us beautify the community. We'll, we'll go out and pick up litter and trash uh, and along our roadways and in some of, some of our parks. Uh, just a great way to get back to the community and enjoy the beautiful spring weather here in Buda. Uh, but again, thanks again for attending. Greg, you have any last words you want to throw out there? It's just my pleasure to be here. And anytime you're doing some events, please let me know. And it's our pleasure to serve your community. All right. Thanks again, everyone. If you have any questions after the event that pops in your mind, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here's my email address. Um, Greg was generous enough to give his to. Um, so if you want to reach out to him directly, uh, but feel free to reach out to me. And if I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll be sure and reach out to Greg and, and get that answer for you. But thanks again for joining us tonight. Bye.